what you're seeing are just kind of the top choices. We've got night skiing, we've got fat biking, snowmaking, a lot of other things also um, in the mix here, but those, those were the top three. For our summer brainy storm, not surprisingly, trails came up again. That was the top thing that people wanted to see, both hiking and biking trails. Um, festivals were mentioned very frequently. In particular, people were interested in seeing music festivals, um, like we used to have here. Um, and a river park, or a whitewater park, was probably the third most popular thing. And again, lots of other ideas, a ropes course, disc golf, which we did successfully um, accomplish this summer. Uh, Alpine slide camping, a pool and fitness center, lots of different ideas coming out of those brainstorming sessions. Uh, for both summer and winter, we asked people to identify the top characteristics that were important to them about Kendall. So when they thought about how Kendall made them feel or what they wanted to see happening here, what were those characteristics? Number one for both summer and winter, you will notice, is community oriented. This is first and foremost um, a town park. Um, it's utilized by our citizens more than anybody else. So community-oriented, family-friendly, number two, um, and then affordable. So those are all obviously traits that Kendall has now and are important to the community as we move forward with any further plans for developing it. Representative comments. So um, basically, there were a number of people that had comments along these lines, and here are some representative quotes. Number one, Kendall offers accessibility for locals and visitors in a small, welcoming atmosphere and positive vibe. I love this. <coughs> Kendall has great potential to be a summer and winter recreational hub. <coughs> Kendall is underutilized. More revenue-generating activities would defray the cost of properly maintaining it and add revenue to the town. And finally, <coughs> It would be great if Kendall provided a smaller and quaint yet complete family option to purgatory. So these are some of the comments that really encapsulate a lot of the feedback we got from community members about their feelings about Kendall. And this was really what prompted the town to move forward with the study that we're here to talk about tonight. So um, basically catalyzed by community feedback, that was, you guys gave us our marching orders so that you wanted to explore this more. Um, so we, the town, put an RFP, a request for proposals out in January of 2018, asking for somebody to do a study to tell us what might be possible here at Kendall. Um, SE Group, which is a firm that has offices here in Colorado as well as in Vermont and Utah, and they do this kind of work all over the world, they were hired to do the study in February of 2018. Cost was $25,000. Half of that was picked up by the Department of Local Affairs. Half of that was paid for by the town. As we got rolling with the study, um, these were some of the considerations that we talked about and the things we wanted them to include in their thinking as they did the study. So number one, we're talking about four season recreation, not just skiing. Skiing is part of that equation, but it's not the whole picture. Um, it's maybe the hardest thing for us to wrap our heads around, so that's why we hired a firm that specializes in that, but there are other pieces to this puzzle. Um, the other thing we really wanted to look at was how to potentially equalize our summer and winter economies. You guys all know how seasonal it is around here. Many of us make our livings four months out of the year, um, and it's a ghost town in the wintertime, or has been. That's improving, it's changing. Um, obviously, Silverton Mountain up the road helps with that a lot. There's been a lot of other winter recreation that's been building, um, and so this could potentially be another way that we can continue those efforts and try to equalize things between summer and winter. Um, community oriented, as we talked about in the previous slides, that had to be a primary focus. We're looking at the town as a ski village. So we're not talking about building condos out here and a massive development. We're thinking about our community, which is very close walking distance. Um, at many larger resorts you may go to, you have a further walk from your parking lot to the slopes than you do from downtown Silverton to Kendall, right? So town as a ski village, we already have right here. Um, and you don't have to make it up. It's got charred till Sunday. Um, and then also looking to complement and not compete with what else is going on in the area. So number one is uh, a municipality and a government entity not wanting to, co to compete with the private sector is important to us. Number two, not wanting to compete with what else is going on in the region. So obviously Silverton Mountain up the road, 
purgatory down the road, Telluride, not far from here. We already have ski areas um, that are stones throw away. So what's our unique value proposition? How do we add to what's going on here rather than compete with that? So obviously we've got baby terrain here on Kendall right now. Silverton Mountain's got the opposite end of the spectrum, and there's a big gap for our community right in the middle. So that's kind of what we're aiming for, if that makes sense. The goals of the study. So number one, to take a bird's eye view of the situation and allow us to figure out what is possible. So, um, you know, we don't even have a way to wrap our heads around this conceptually unless we take a first stab at some kind of a, a picture of what it might look like to develop Kendall to be more than it is right, right now. So what's possible and do we have the raw ingredients to do that? Um, and that is hopefully going to form the basis for an informed discussion that this community can have going forward in any other planning efforts that we make. So I want to stress very clearly that the information that you guys have seen is up on the town website now. There was an article on the front page of the paper today. I want to stress very much this is not a plan. We are not doing anything right now except talking about possibilities. Um, and there will be a full-blown community process, the same way we've been doing this whole last year, to get everybody's input on what this looks like going forward. So, just want to make that really clear. Scope of work. So, the town started with the first piece of that puzzle, which was community input. Then, as we handed this off to SE Group, they worked on a market assessment, so looking at local and regional demographics and visitation patterns, to say who is the audience that we might potentially draw and attract, um, what else is going on in the area that we need to be aware of, and again, that unique value proposition that we were just talking about earlier. They did a site analysis. So they came out and they actually looked at the terrain that we have here, they did a lot of mapping. Um, basically, the, the goal of that exercise was to tell us what kind of terrain do we have. Do we have blue and green terrain? Um, that's kind of what we're aiming at. Um, I mean, I know a lot of you have skied Kendall, uh, that country. We know we've got black terrain, right? We know we have expert and advanced terrain, but that's not necessarily what we're looking for. We're looking for blue and green. And so that site analysis came back to tell us, yes, we do have that. Preliminary design. Um, so those guys came up with a couple of scenarios for us to show us what it might look like if we developed the terrain in such a way that we took the best advantage of what we have. Um, very preliminary, it's, I wouldn't say it's a stat in the dark, it's a very well informed um, preliminary plan, but it is certainly not um, the final design. And the reason they needed to do that is they had to figure out what elements we might want to include so that we could do a financial analysis. How much might these things cost, right? That's an important piece of this puzzle as well. So those were the different um, elements of the study. And here are some of the conclusions that they drew from those different pieces. Number one, in the market assessment, in order for us to attract destination skiers. So number one, we know we want our community members to utilize this asset, right? But we're also looking to bring people from outside, families from the region, part south, um, potentially front range. We want to attract some destination skiers here. What do we need to do? Number one is expand terrain. Uh, we need to establish consistent snow conditions potentially through snowmaking, obviously. Um, we need to market it appropriately. They defined um, some ideas about how to do that. Offer non ski winter activities and develop past partnerships. So that was the market assessment conclusion. And then with the site analysis, and you can see here, um, it's not the greatest photo, but this is the area that they studied. And it's quite a large chunk of land on the face of Kendall. Um, our little ski area sits right here. Um, so we were looking at the terrain around us that would be adjacent to the existing ski area. Um, it is a combination of BLM land as well as some private holdings. Um, but we were looking at that terrain and taking the bird's eye view. So the, um, the results of that is that there, there is a large area of excellent ski terrain in the central part of the study area with a large quantity of terrain suitable for ability levels from novice up to advanced. So we do have what it would take to make a well-rounded ski area here. Um, and clearly significant potential to expand and develop if the community chooses that. So preliminary design, they looked at some things for our base area, 
there was a suggestion of a new uh, day lodge. This facility, while it's gorgeous and wonderful, is not purpose built for ski rentals, ski school, restaurant, those kinds of things. So we would potentially need to build a new day lodge. Um, a restaurant was something the community indicated they wanted to see, and that obviously is one piece of the puzzle in a fully functional ski area. Um, parking considerations, a building for vehicle maintenance, um, the ice rink, obviously a high priority for the community. We need to look at where we could relocate that that is more appropriate. Um, so those were some of the considerations when they sketched out some ideas as far as the preliminary design. And then as far as the ski resort potential itself, as far as where we would put lifts, um, they looked at a 300 acre scenario and an 800 acre scenario. The difference here is our 300 acre scenario um, is looking at using only BLM land. So strictly public lands, um, not interfering at all with any of the private claims. Um, and the 800 acre scenario, they wanted to also give us that picture of if there wasn't any obstacle in the way, what could we potentially do? Obviously, the scenario this community decides on will be somewhere in the middle of this. Um, you know, I don't think either of these are, they're meant to be bookends for us. Right, to talk about on um, basically the spectrum. What's the smallest possible development? What's the largest they might suggest? Um, this does incorporate three to four new chairlifts as well as a surface lift or a um, magic carpet in the base area for our very beginner learners. Um, they talked quite a bit about a tubing hill. There was some consideration of night lighting for night skiing, which I know is a high priority for the community, and snow making. Um, I will mention that snowmaking and night skiing are not something that they calculated into the financial picture because they felt those needed study on their own. Um, and, and until we really know what we're doing, um, we don't really know what the parameters for that will be. So you can see on the left we've got the 300 acre and on the right we've got the 800 acre um, scenarios. And I will say even at 800 acres, this would be considered a small ski area in, in terms of uh, what the ski area looks at when they rank ski areas as far as their size. Um, to give you some perspective, Monarch is a good example. They're 800 acres. So if you're trying to wrap your head around, what does that look like? Um, for multi-season recreation, so our non-skiing activities. Um, they looked at a number of adventure activities like a zip line, an alpine slide, ropes courses, um, a fun zone in the base area. These are all things that could potentially appeal to the summer visitation we already have um, and generate some revenue for the facility. Scenic chairlift rides, trails obviously, um, in addition to mountain biking and hiking trails, developing a river corridor as a trail, um, and then connections between town and Kendall. Um, event spaces, and then also the river and whitewater park concept was something that they looked at in their multi-season considerations. Ooh, there we go. Um, so the financial analysis. I know I'm cruising through a lot of this pretty quickly. Um, we'll have time for questions, um, but just so on the financial side of things, um, they used a, a benchmarking process. So basically, they looked at similar size ski areas, and this is how they kind of came up with their numbers. I will say that as we drill down and start fleshing out what we might do here, um, those numbers are going to get a little more specific. Right now they're very generalized, um, but it's just something to give us an idea and let us wrap our heads around what it might take. Um, they looked at fixed, semi-variable, and variable costs. They also looked at what the revenue and expense per visit would be, so you know how much would we need to be making off of each visitor that comes and skis here. Um, and then there were two finance scenarios that they looked at, one where um, the town did 100% debt financing and one where all of the improvements that were needed were done without any debt. I think, again, they're trying to give us bookends. Um, where we'll actually end up is somewhere in the middle, right? Typically, in a scenario like this, it's going to be a combination of owner equity, there may be some debt financing. There might be some bond measure that we need to look at for the community. There may be grants. We just don't know at this point. It's a little too soon to say, but they were trying to give us a couple different scenarios, again, to give us something to consider when we're trying to have a conversation about it. 
and the break-even analysis. So in this scenario with four ski lifts um, being added, whether it be the 300 or 800 acre scenario, we're looking at $25 million in capital improvements. Um, their feeling is that we would need to attract anywhere from 70 to 100,000 annual skier visits um, in order to break even on this. So again, to help you wrap your head around that, I'm thinking that's about 1,000 people a day with 100 to 120 day season. Think about our summertime and how many people we have in town in the summer that come on the train or come off the million dollar highway. If you think about maybe mid-June to late June in town, I think that's about what we're talking about volume-wise for people. So just trying to give you guys a sense of what that might look like. And when we're talking about trying to equalize summer and winter, if this scenario were successful, that would definitely do it. Um, community benefits. Well, obviously we've been talking a lot about building our winter economy. With the summer that we had this year, um, I think it's really obvious to many of us that we can't put all our eggs in one basket in diversifying our economy, both in terms of recreation and tourism, as well as outside of tourism is really important. This is one piece, or could be one piece of that equation. Um, obviously, if we're going to operate a ski area of that size, there would be jobs created as a result of it. Um, and I think that it would also greatly improve the quality of life for our community members, make it some place that our kids want to come back to after they go off to college. Um, they might want to come back here rather than move away. It might attract other businesses that appreciate the quality of life that we have to offer in a small town charm. So I do think it's really important as we continue this discussion as a community that we're thinking about the character of our community and what we want to see as far as growth and what feels comfortable and good to us because we all moved here because we love it here, right? So um, we'll be wanting to look at quality of life pretty um, heavily. So key points as far as takeaways from this, yes, expanded four season recreation at Kendall Mountain is possible, right? So we, we have the green light there, but I do need to tell you that a whole lot more discussion, study, and refinement is needed before anything moves forward here. Um, and it's certainly not going to be an overnight change. Um, it's going to be a long process with community involvement the whole way through. Um, if we look at acquiring BLM land, either leasing it or potentially um, doing another recreation and public purpose acquisition, um, that's going to require environmental assessments. There's a lot involved here. It's not going to be an instant process, and there's a lot more work to be done. And throughout all of that, again, community feedback and involvement is going to be critical. So I appreciate everybody coming here tonight to spend some time learning about the study. Um, I appreciate all of the feedback that we got through this past year that's contributed to the results of that study, and I'm looking forward to hearing more from everybody about what you'd like to see going forward. Um, so next steps for the town anyway, we are looking at entering into a master planning process. Uh, we did just apply for a GOCO grant to help fund that. Uh, we won't have an answer on that until March, but uh, one way or another, I think we do need to look at a master plan for Kendall, um, and that will help us define the vision and also a strategy for implementing whatever vision it is the community settles on. Um, the other pieces of work that we need to do is that we need to explore the potential financing options that are out there, how might we accomplish this, um, and explore partnerships. So um, that's potentially a big piece of this puzzle. Um, as Just as we do at Mullis Lake Campground, we have a campground operator that we hire to manage that facility for the town. Um, the Chamber of Commerce manages our visitor center. Um, we're not we're government, we're not the business of running ski areas, right? <laughs> so uh, we might want to look at some partnerships as far as people that can help us with expertise, potentially bring resources to the table to help us do this and do it right. Um, and these are all giant question marks until we define what the community vision is, and then we'll be able to figure out some of these other steps moving forward. So resources for you all. Um, I mentioned earlier that the full study is available on our website. Um, just to make it a little easier on you, if you go to skikendall.com, there is a link at the very bottom of the page to the study. So you can download a PDF, you can look at it there, um, and then also we will have print versions in town hall. 
There is a survey monkey that is going to be available to everybody, so you can do a survey online. And we also have some survey forms here tonight that I'm going to ask you guys to fill out before you leave. Um, and we'll be collecting feedback on that through the end of the month. The big thing we're just wanting to hear from the community is thumbs up or thumbs down. Do you want us to continue exploring this? Um, we're not saying thumbs up, th thumbs down to an 800 acre expansion because we have no idea yet if that's what it's going to look like. Um, those again are just some um, concepts to help us have an informed discussion. So if you'd like the community to move forward with additional exploration and planning, and if you want the town to do that, um, and spearhead that process, that's what we're looking for a yes or no on. There's also a maybe <laughs> category there, and if you have questions, there's a space for you to let us know what your questions and concerns are so that we can incorporate that into our process as well. Um, so, yeah, just kind of summing up the, uh, the survey. And the other thing I want to mention to you guys is that is anonymous. I am asking for your contact information, your personal info, just so we know we're not getting duplicate entries from people. Not that anybody would be dishonest, but. Um, we just want to make sure that um, everything is above board and we are collecting accurate information. So that information will not be shared with anyone. It's just kind of a tracking mechanism for us in town hall. So that's what I've got for you tonight. Um, and I am happy to entertain some questions. Um, again, we do have, once we break here, we've got some survey forms out in the lobby. Um, and a little drop box for you to stick those in. There are a couple of printouts of the uh, viability assessment itself if you want to thumb through them. Um, and again, we'll have all of that available online and at Town Hall that you can review at, at your leisure. So, okay. Yes, Melody. Are we actually making money on the area now? No. No, we are not. And the town actually makes a, a choice to operate it at a loss because we think it is an asset for the community and for our children. So if you're talking a thousand people a day in the winter, two people came per car. We have 500 cars parked here per day. I'm ready to fly. We have to have a show from visitor center up to here. It's very like they seem to love to speed. But I am not seeing that we're considering that the normal No doubt our remoteness is going to factor into that, and we're going to have to look at when we um, do our ultimate planning, do we think that a thousand skiers a day is reasonable or not, right? This is their first stab at giving us some numbers so we can think about it. And I agree that parking is something that needs to be carefully considered. We need to think about locations for that. Um, I don't think it's an insurmountable challenge, but it is something we'll need to look at and study. Well, that's going to pretty much all over town. And uh, everybody tends to be territorial because they own the parking spot in front of their house anyway. But um, the, the, one of the other things I'm thinking about is the private property in the middle there. Are those mining claims that are developed or not? Some of them are developed and some of them are not. So that and would be a big thing. It could be. And that's why they gave us the scenario of would it be possible if we completely avoided any private property. So we do have an option to look at there. And again, I think that the ultimate scenario, if we move forward, is somewhere in the middle. Um, but we just don't know yet because we haven't done that exploration with property owners or even nailed down a, a full concept yet. So are we thinking in this study that we're talking about how much gas it's going to cost us when we get to our 30, 30 cents a day that we'd be earning on here? I read that in the study that we would get to the point of 30 cents a person. And um, are we talking about like control groups, the fear guides, the everything? Once again, I think that some of those numbers will get further solidified as we nail down what our plan looks like. They did take an initial stab at that. Um, I will say that when they're looking at um, similar ski areas, um, they're saying somewhere in the realm of 50 year round staff. Um, I don't know where we're gonna end up because again, we're just in the very preliminary stages of looking at this. So our numbers could be quite different in terms of skier days, 
in terms of staffing, acreage, et cetera. It's really all a question mark. I think the study raises more questions than it, than it answers, if you ask me. So. One last question for me. As I understood the study when I read it at 2 a.m., relocate the skating area for parking. So where would you put a nice skating area which would bring people in from either of place that were skating last year and not coming to town for business? I did not see a location suggested for the ice rink. They mention it in the narrative that a location needs to be found. I think part of the issue there is that we'll need to do some soil analysis to figure out where an appropriate location will be. Where it sits right now, there is water that runs underground and causes heaving. Um, it's not an ideal location, and we've definitely talked about that inside Town Hall, that we'll need to study and see where a good spot to put it would be. But given that it was the number two priority that the community identified, it will definitely have a place in this plan going forward. We think your, your address is already being fast as we turn. But um, thank you so much. Thank you. Anybody else have questions? Yes, Frank. Please. Thank you, by the way, for such a wonderful presentation. Thank you for this presentation. <clears throat> I, I'm a little confused by the map. It, it says that we're going to possibly have a lift to 13 2. Is that one lift? The scenario that they've mapped out there shows a series of four different chairlifts. And I definitely think when we look at that upper, the upper reaches, there's some question there as far as whether that's truly feasible or not. Again, all of this needs a little bit further study. Yeah, thanks. Other questions? I see a hand in the back. Paul. Yeah, I just have a comment. This SE group. They don't have a very good environmental or community reputation. You know, they, they deal with Vail and, and the, the I-70 corridor. I'd like to see our flavor be a little more Wolf Creek. So maybe we could shop that around a little bit and see who's a little more down home and uh, folksy and you know, community oriented. These guys are big. They do big resorts with, you know, run over a lot of people and communities and I'd like to see us look around a little more. Any additional study or work that we do would go out for a request for proposal. Um, and so we certainly would be vetting any applications for further work. Um, SE Group is not the only firm in the world that does this. I will say that they also have worked with Solar Mountain. I know they've worked with Purgatory and some of the resorts um, that are associated with Perg. So, um, you know, they do, I think, have a broad level of experience across the world, but like I said, anything will go out for bid and will be vetted um, before any further work is done. And Paul, I couldn't agree with you more. We, you know, I think the community has said that they want something that's a little more down home. I think Wolf Creek is a great example of a resort we might want to emulate, um, as is Monarch that I mentioned earlier, and there's some other real gems you know, in Colorado that are small ski areas that have managed to really maintain an authentic flavor. None of us are looking to be Baylor Tully, right? Right? I don't need to say that out loud, do I? <laughs> Any other questions? In the back there. Hi, Rob. Hi, how are you doing, Lisa? My name is Rob Bays, and by all means, excuse me for being late. I was waiting on a materials delivery for about an hour and a half this afternoon. But uh, I'm the one that's been um, researching and putting together a game plan for a Northern Ski Complex. Um, I plan to have four or five jumps of varying sizes and uh, Nordic track that could be any different amounts of lengths and include any, any different type of terrain around there. Um, I did a real basic aerial takeoff of jump locations, two of them, or three of them possibly being kind of right here behind the building, and starting at like 15 meters. Um, I want to set it up so that kids from first grade all the way to 12th would be able to utilize them. Um, and they come over there after school like every day. And with 15 meter kids, seven and eight, uh, could learn how to jump on it and go from 15 to a 30 or 35, 45, a 75, and 100, which is large enough for NCAA practice and Olympic hopeful practice. And uh, I'm waiting to 
start getting into any more um, detailed engineering or site um, development. I'm, this meeting is one of the meetings that I'm um, interested in what the response is as far as the town response, as far as continuing on the project that I'm interested in doing. And uh, Lisa told me that it now might become part of a larger development that'll go up the mountain here. That'd be great. Some more uh, double diamond skin, good stuff. Um, so I think what I would say, Ralph. I just wanted to introduce myself, and I'll leave my email with Lisa. Anybody wants to email me with any kind of questions or anything, um, over where the where I'd like to do a 75 and a 90 or a 100, um, I plan to put in a pommel it, uh, or comb it, plan how I want to pronounce it, and anybody might not be familiar with it, it's just a disc, so you can get a ride back up the hill and stay on the ground, which keeps you warm, because you're not sitting up there still in the wind. Um, and see if we get 30 jumps in the afternoon. And uh, it has the potential of drawing people here in the winter, um, which I'm real interested in, so I bring money into town, keeping the economy viable, and having a practice area that has enough challenge that people from a lot of different parts of the country might come here and probably most likely will, and there's a lot of schools that used to have ski teams that don't have them anymore, especially Nordic teams, because they don't have the facilities, um, and interest has kind of gone away in those towns, and uh, this could, you know, very possibly be a good revival of all that interest. Um, and I'm open to whatever type of input as far as repositioning the jumps, um, getting jumps down, big jumps down in the middle instead of straight off the edge. Uh, what I'd like to do is just the other side of the rabbit ears fly. And uh, that's a steep slope there. That's a real good one. You almost get air that's going down it. So Ralph, what I would say in response to that is as we move forward in the planning process, obviously the community has said that Nordic and cross country are important to them and we do have a really robust um, Silverton Winter Sports Club program going. Our kids ski at the hill um, every Friday afternoon here in town as well. So I think there's great potential for the types of things that you are talking about. Mm -hmm. And as we move forward in the planning phase, uh, you know, I think everybody would love to hear more about that. So thank yeah, you for being here tonight. Yeah, you bet. And again, excuse me for being so late. <laughs> Wait on the materials Do we have other questions in the room? Yes, Shane. Do you happen to know the average number of skier visits at Four Peaks Mars in the Earth Flight? Just for I don't have those numbers off the top of my head. I will say that um, I'm trying to think it's vertical. James, you probably know this mm -hmm. population. Um, I think we'll pray on a busy day.
you know, I think that's going to be key to our success and the key to um, doing this in a way that is viable for everybody, right? We're wanting to support what already exists and offer something unique. So, yeah, complimentary, not competitive. Absolutely. Yes, Logan.
It's a little gem that we have here, and um, I'd like to see us do more with it. So, thanks.
Thank you.